Question 1. What are three factors that a risk manager may consider when developing an information security strategy? A. Threats, risks, and solutions. B. Prevention, detection, and response. C. Risk levels, staff qualifications, and security tooling. D. Risk levels, operating costs, and compliance levels. Answer D. When developing a long-term strategy for an information security program, the best three factors are risk levels, operating costs, and compliance levels. One of these factors may be more important than others in any given organization and for a variety of reasons. Generally, a long-term strategy is being developed to improve the state of one of these, reduction of risk, reduction of cost, or improvement of compliance. Question 2. Jerome, a new CISO in a SaaS organization, has been asked to develop a long-term information security strategy. Which is the best first step for understanding the present state of the organization's existing information security program? A. Perform a code review of the organization's SaaS offerings. B. Study the contents of the risk register. C. Perform a baseline risk assessment. D. Commission a penetration test of internal and external networks. Answer C. The best first step for understanding the current state of an organization's information security program is to perform a comprehensive risk assessment. This is the best answer because a risk assessment takes the broadest assessment of the state of information risk, along with the state of any existing controls. Question 3. Robert has located his organization's mission. Statement and a list of strategic objectives. What steps should Robert take to ensure that the information security program aligns with the business? A. Discuss strategic objectives with business leaders to understand better what they want to accomplish and what steps are being taken to achieve them. B. Develop a list of activities that will support the organization's strategic objectives and determine the cost of each. C. Ensure that there are no unidentified vulnerabilities. D. Ensure that there are no unidentified risks. Answer A. The purpose of a threat assessment is to identify and study internal and external threat scenarios involving key assets, including threats from any and all types of threat actors that can have the most significant impact to the organization based on the most likely scenarios that could reasonably occur. Question 4. Jerome, a new CISO in a SaaS organization, has been asked to develop a long-term information security strategy. While examining the organization's information security policy, and together with knowledge of the organization's practices and controls, Jerome now realizes that the organization's security policy is largely aspirational. What is the most important consequence of this on the organization? Question 4. A. Confusion on the part of end users. B. Appearance that the organization is not in control of its security practices. C. Fines and sanctions from regulators. D. Unmitigated risks and vulnerabilities. Answer B. An organization with a largely aspirational security policy, that is, the organization is not in compliance with most of its security policies, will have the appearance of not being in control of its practices. Were the organization to enter into cybersecurity-related legal proceedings in such a state, the organization's information security policy would be a liability and would give the appearance that the organization does not take information security seriously. Question 5. Jerome, a new CISO in a SaaS organization, has been asked to develop a long-term information security strategy. While examining the organization's information security policy, and together with knowledge of the organization's practices and controls, Jerome now realizes that the organization's security policy is largely aspirational. What is the best first step Jerome should take next? A. Create an entry in the organization's risk register. B. Withdraw the security policy and write a new one that's closer to reality. C. Perform a gap analysis and determine actions to take to close the policy gaps. D. Consult with the organization's general counsel to develop a plan of action. Answer D. Consulting counsel is the best first step. A security policy that is largely aspirational, meaning the organization is not in compliance with the majority of its policies, introduces legal liability upon the organization, which is best handled by the organization's general counsel. Although a CISO is in the best position to describe the nature and type of gaps in an organization's security policy, the precise course of action is best decided by the general counsel. Question 6. The ultimate responsibility for an organization's cybersecurity program lies with whom? A. The Board of Directors B. The Chief Executive Officer CEO, C, the Chief Information Officer, CIO, B, the Chief Information Security Officer, CISO. Answer B. A document that describes tools, products, or protocols is a standard. Question 7. Jerome, a new CISO in a SaaS organization, 
has identified a document that describes suggested techniques for implementing encryption protocols. What type of document is this? A. Policy. B. Standard. C. Guideline. D. Procedure. Answer C. A document that provides suggestions on the implementation or use of a policy or standard is known as a guideline. Question 8. An organization is required by PCI to include several policies that are highly technical and not applicable to the majority of its employees. What is the best course of action for implementing these policies? A. Implement a technical security policy containing these required items, with a separate acceptable use policy for all workers. B. Incorporate all PCI required policies in the organization's information policy and let users figure out what is relevant to them. C. Include all PCI related policies and indicate which are applicable to end users. D. Keep the PCI related policies out of the overall security policy because it will confuse non technical end users. Answer A. The best approach in an organization in scope for PCI is to segregate its policy content into separate documents, a technical or mandate specific security policy document for technical workers that includes all PCI related policies and a separate acceptable use policy, AUP that contains security policy content for all end users. Question 9. Which of the following is the most likely result of an organization that lacks a security architecture function? A. Inconsistent security-related procedures. B. Inconsistent application of standards. C. Lower process maturity. D. Added complication and vulnerability management tools. Answer B. In an organization lacking a security architecture function, there is a greater likelihood that standards are going to be applied inconsistently. A security architecture function would likely include reference architectures, which are documents that define in detail how technology is implemented, configured, and even managed in an organization. Question 10. What is the main advantage of a security architecture function in a larger, distributed organization? A. Greater employee satisfaction. B. Better results in vulnerability assessments. C. Greater consistency in the use of tools and configurations. D. Lower cost of operations. Answer C. The main benefit of a security architecture is consistency and approach for all instances in the organization. For example, in a retail organization with dozens, hundreds, or thousands of locations, the use of a reference architecture as a part of a security architecture function would help ensure that equipment in all locations was configured identically. In another example, a reference architecture for access management would specify that that SAML 2.0 would be used for single sign-on for all business applications. In the absence of a security architecture function, security tools and protocols might be inconsistently implemented and configured. Complexity is the enemy of security, it is said, and a large environment implemented inconsistently would be unnecessarily complex. Question 11. Which of the following statements about control frameworks is correct? A. Control frameworks are used only in regulated environments. B. All control frameworks are essentially the same, with different controls groups. C. It doesn't matter which control framework is selected, as long as controls are operated effectively. D. Different control frameworks are associated with different industries. Answer D. Different control frameworks are indeed associated with different industries. For instance, PCI controls are used in organizations that store, process, or transmit credit card information, and NIST 800-53 controls are used in U.S. federal government agencies and organizations that provide information services to those agencies. Question 12. Joel, a new CISO in an organization, has discovered that the server team applies security patches in response to the quarterly vulnerability scan reports created by the security team. What is the best process improvement Joel can introduce to this process? A. Server team proactively applies patches, and security scans confirm effective patching. B. Server team proactively applies patches, and security scans confirm effective patching and identify other issues. C. Security team increases the frequency of vulnerability scans from quarterly to monthly for internal scans and weekly for external scans. D. Security team increases the frequency of vulnerability scans from quarterly to monthly. Answer B. The best improvement is the fundamental change from patching being reactive to being proactive and scanning serving as a QA to ensure that patching is working effectively. Further, security scanning can identify other issues besides patching, namely, security configuration problems as well as the presence of outdated or unsupported software. Question 13. Which of the following is the best management level metric for a vulnerability management process? 
A. Average time from availability of a patch to the successful application of a patch. B. Average time from a vulnerability scan to the successful application of a patch. C. Average time to apply a security patch successfully. D. Number of security patches applied. Answer A. This is the most meaningful metric for management. This tells the story about how long servers are unprotected by security patches, which equates to exposure and risk of an intrusion and breach that pose potentially damaging impacts to the organization. Question 14. A new CISO in a manufacturing company is gathering artifacts to understand the state of security in the organization. Which of the following would be the least valuable for determining risk posture? A. Security incident log. B. Security awareness training records. C. Penetration test results. D. Report to the Board of Directors. Answer D. A report to the Board of Directors is the only one of the answers that represents secondary information that may have been filtered, edited, and or biased. The other answers, security incident log, security awareness training records, and penetration test results, are more valuable records that are less subject to bias. Question 15. An organization needs to hire an executive who will be responsible for ensuring that the organization's policies, business processes, and information systems are compliant with laws and regulations concerning the proper collection, use, and protection of personally identifiable information. What is the best job title for the organization to use for this position? A. CSOB. Zero. C. CISO. D. CPO. D. It provides no value to a security leader because it focuses on business continuity, not security. Answer B. The purpose of a business impact analysis, BIA, is to provide a concise view of the criticality of business processes in an organization. From there, dependencies on information systems, that is, software applications and supporting infrastructure, can be determined. Question 16. Samuel is the CISO in an organization that is a U.S. public company. Samuel has noted that the organization's internal audit function concentrates its auditing efforts on financially relevant applications and underlying IT systems and infrastructure. As an experienced CISO, what conclusion can Samuel draw from this? A. The audits performed by internal audit on underlying IT systems and infrastructure are value-added activities. B. Internal audit scope is too narrow and must include all applications and IT systems. C. The scope of internal audit is of no consequence or value to the CISO. D. The scope of internal audits auditing activities is as expected for a U.S. public company. Answer C. In a U.S. public company, an internal audit function is required to audit the financially relevant business processes and their supporting business applications and IT infrastructure to provide reasonable assurances about the integrity of financial reports produced by the organization to its shareholders. This is required because in 2002, Congress passed the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, SOX, to protect shareholders and the general public from accounting errors and fraudulent practices in enterprises and to improve the accuracy of corporate disclosures. The Act sets deadlines for compliance and publishes rules on requirements. Question 17. Of what value is a third-party risk management, TPRM, process for a CISO who is developing a long-term security strategy for an organization? A. TPRM provides valuable insight into the security capabilities of critical service providers. B. TPRM provides valuable insight into the organization's procurement process. C. TPRM provides a list of all service providers used by the organization. D. TPRM does not provide value to the CISO because it is concerned only with business processes. Answer A. An effective TPRM program captures and archives detailed information about security controls in third-party service provider organizations. This helps a CISO better understand the overall world of risk with regard to the protection of critical data and capabilities. Question 18. Joseph, a new security leader in an online retail organization, is developing a long-term security strategy. Joseph has developed a detailed description of the future state of the security organization. What must Joseph do before developing a strategy to realize the future state? A. Perform an audit of existing security controls to understand their effectiveness. B. Understand the current state and perform a gap analysis to identify the differences. C. Perform a risk assessment to identify potential pitfalls in the strategy. D. Commission a penetration test to identify unknown vulnerabilities in critical systems. Answer B. When developing a strategy, it is first necessary to develop the desired end state, understand the current state, and understand the gaps between the two. The strategy, then, will consist of work required to close those gaps, 
transforming the organization into the desired end state. Question 19. Joseph, a new security leader in an online retail organization, is developing a long-term security strategy. In his research, Joseph is seeking documents describing the current security program. Which of the following documents would not provide the best value in this analysis? A. Security Program Charter. B. Security Team Job Descriptions. C. Information Security Policy. D. Meeting Minutes for the Cybersecurity Steering Committee. Answer B. Of these four sets of information, job descriptions for security team members would provide the least valuable insight. In part this is because workers' regular activities sometimes stray away from statements in a job description. At best, a job description describes desired or expected activities at a point in time in the past. Question 20. Quincy is a security leader who wants to formalize information security in his organization. What is the best first step to formalizing the program? A. Start an information security intranet site. B. Start an information security newsletter. C. Develop an information security policy. D. Develop an information security program charter. Answer D. An information security program charter describes the mission and vision for an information security program, defines roles and responsibilities, and describes its engagement with others in the organization as well as external parties such as customers or regulators. Question 21. Which security metric is best considered a leading indicator of an attack? A. Number of firewall rules triggered B. Number of security awareness training sessions. Completed C. Percentage of system scan D. Mean time to apply security patches. B. Determine the steps necessary to raise process maturity to 5. C. Identify the processes with the lowest maturity and develop a strategy to raise them to the level of other processes. D. Perform a root cause analysis, RCA, to determine why business process maturity has fallen to this level. Answer A. The best answer here is to determine any gaps between current and future maturity levels so that any processes needing improvement can be improved and measured. Question 22. An organization's security leader, together with members of its information security steering committee, has decided to require that all encryption of data at rest must use ICE 256 or better encryption. The organization needs to update what document? A. Policies. B. Standards. C. Guidelines. D. Systems. Answer B. A standards document is the correct type of document for identifying specific protocols, configurations, and algorithms for use in an organization. Question 23. A security leader has been asked to justify the need to implement a new strategy for information security. How should the security leader respond? A. Develop a project plan showing the personnel, tasks, timelines, and dependencies. B. Develop a risk matrix that includes the potential consequences if the strategy is not implemented. C. Develop a SWOT diagram showing strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. D. Develop a business case that includes success criteria, requirements, costs, and action plan. Answer D. A business case is the best method for justifying a project or initiative to support the company's strategy. A well-formed business case includes a problem statement, current and desired states, resources required, requirements, a plan, and success criteria. Question 24. What is the purpose of obtaining management commitment in support of a strategy? A. Improved enforcement of policy. B. Approval for new hires. C. Visible support to reinforce the importance of the strategy. D. Approval of spending. Answer C. Management commitment in the form of messaging, availability of resources, and leadership by example slash actions helps the organization achieve its strategies. Question 25. An organization has a process whereby security-related hazards are identified, followed by analysis and decisions about what to do about these hazards. What kind of a business process is this? A. Vulnerability management. B. Risk treatment. C. Risk management. D. Risk assessment. Answer B. The risk management process consists of risk assessments, analysis about risks that are identified by risk assessment, followed by discussions, and finally decisions about what to do about these risks. Smart, in the context of metrics, stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. Question 26. What is the purpose of a cyber risk management program in an organization? A. Consume information from a centralized risk register B. Identify and make decisions about information security risks. C. 
Plan for future cybersecurity projects and initiatives. D. Develop mitigating controls. Answer B. The purpose of a risk management program is to use various means to identify risks in an organization and then study and make decisions about those risks through a process known as risk treatment. Question 27. All of the following activities are typical inputs into a risk management process except which one? A. Code reviews. B. Risk assessments. C. Threat assessments. D. Internal audits. Answer A. A code review is not a typical input to a risk management process, primarily because a code review represents a narrow, tactical examination of a program's source code. Output from a code review would likely be fed into a software defect tracking process or a vulnerability management process. Question 28. What should be the primary objective of a risk management strategy? A. Determine the organization's risk appetite. B. Identify credible risks and transfer them to an external party. C. Identify credible risks and reduce them to an acceptable level. D. Eliminate credible risks. Answer C. The primary objective of a risk management strategy is the identification of risks, followed by the reduction of those risks to levels acceptable to executive management. Question 29. What are possible outcomes of a risk that has been identified and analyzed in a risk management process? A. Acceptance, avoidance, mitigation, transfer, residual. B. Acceptance, elimination, reduction, transfer. C. Acceptance, avoidance, elimination, mitigation, transfer. D. Acceptance, avoidance, mitigation, transfer. Answer D. The four possible outcomes of a risk in a risk management process are acceptance, avoidance, mitigation, and transfer. These are known as risk treatment options. Question 30. Don, a new CISO in a pharmaceutical company is reviewing an existing risk management process. The process states that the CISO alone makes all risk treatment decisions. What should Don conclude from this observation? A. Process should be changed so that other business leaders may collaborate on risk treatment decisions. B. The process is appropriate, as it is the CISO's responsibility to make risk treatment decisions. C. The process should be changed so that the internal audit department approves risk treatment decisions. D. The process should be changed so that external regulators approve risk treatment decisions. Answer A. Risk treatment decisions are business decisions that should be made by business leaders in collaboration with the CISO. The CISO should not be making unilateral decisions on behalf of the business. Question 31. Marie, a CISO at a manufacturing company, is building a new cyber risk governance process. For this process to be successful, what is the best first step for Marie to take? A. Develop a Raji matrix that defines executive roles and responsibilities. B. Charter a security steering committee consisting of IT and cybersecurity leaders. C. Develop a risk management process similar to what is found in ISO IEC 27001. D. Charter a security steering committee consisting of IT, security, and business leaders. Answer D. The best course of action is the formation of a Chartered Information Security Steering Committee that consists of IT and security leaders, as well as business leaders. For security governance to succeed, business leaders need to be involved and participate in discussions and decisions. Question 32. To what audience should communication about new information risks be sent? A. Customers. B. Security Steering Committee and Executive Management. C. All Personnel. D. Board of Directors. Answer B. New developments concerning information risk should be sent to the Information Security Steering Committee and Executive Management. This is a part of a typical risk management process that includes risk communication. Question 33. An organization's internal audit department is assessing the organization's compliance with PCI DSS. Internal audit finds that the organization is not compliant with a PCI DSS control regarding workers' annual acknowledgement of security policy. What kind of a risk has been identified? A. Insider threat risk. B. Matter disclosure risk. C. Compliance risk. B. Administrative risk. Answer C. This is primarily A of compliance risk. Organizations handling credit card data are required to comply with all controls in PCI DSS, whether they represent actual risks or not. Question 34. An internal audit team has completed a comprehensive internal audit and has determined that several controls are ineffective. What is the next step that should be performed? Slash? A. Correlate these results with an appropriately scoped penetration test. B. Develop compensating controls to reduce risk. C. Perform a risk assessment. 
D. Develop a risk-based action plan to remediate ineffective controls. Answer D. Typically, organizations are compelled to remediate most or all findings identified by an internal audit department. Taking a risk-based approach is sensible because this serves to remediate findings by addressing the highest risk findings first. Question 35. Which of the following statements is correct regarding applicable regulation and the selection of a security controls framework? A. An appropriate framework will make it easier to map regulatory details to required activities. B. It makes no difference which controls framework is selected for regulatory compliance matters. C. Applicable laws and security control framework have little to do with each other. D. For regulated organizations, why selection of control frameworks will result in lower cyber insurance premiums? Answer A. Applicable regulations may or may not be specific to required activities. In some cases, control frameworks are available that closely resemble required activities. Selection of a control framework that corresponds to an applicable law or regulation may help an organization to better align regulatory requirements with required activities. Question 36. 1 inch the use of FAIR, factor analysis of information risk, how does a risk manager determine the potential types of loss? A. A risk assessment is used to determine what types of loss may occur. B. A record of prior losses is used. C. Losses in similar companies are used. D. Loss types are defined by the FAIR method. Answer D. The FAIR, Factor Analysis of Information Risk, analysis method contains six types of loss, which are productivity, response, replacement, fines, and judgments, competitive advantage, and reputation. According to the FAIR method, any cybersecurity incident would result in one or more of these losses. Question 37. Don, a CISO in a pharmaceutical organization, is partnering with the company's legal department on the topic of new applicable regulations. Which of the following approaches is most likely to be successful? A. Examine each new regulation for impact to the organization. Confirm applicability if impact is significant. B. Examine each new regulation for impact to the organization. Confirm applicability for regulations from other countries. C. Examine each new regulation for applicability. If applicable, analyze for impact to the organization. D. Subscribe to a service that informs the organization of new laws. Implement them in the following budget year. Answer C. Because there are so many regulations of different kinds, it is first necessary to determine which ones are applicable to the organization. For regulations that are applicable, the next best course of action is to understand the impact of the regulation on business processes and costs and then develop an action plan for complying with the regulation. Question 38. What steps must be completed prior to the start of a risk assessment in an organization? A. Determine the qualifications of the firm that will perform the audit. B. Determine scope, purpose, and criteria for the audit. C. Determine the qualifications of the persons who will perform the audit. D. Determine scope, applicability, and purpose for the audit. Answer B. According to ISO IEC 27005 and other risk management frameworks, it is first necessary to establish the context of an audit. This means making a determination of the scope of the audit, which parts of the organization are to be included. Also, it is necessary to determine the purpose of the risk assessment. For example, determining control coverage, control effectiveness, or business process effectiveness. Finally, the criteria for the audit need to be determined. Question 39. A risk manager recently completed a risk assessment in an organization. Executive management asked the risk manager to remove one of the findings from the final report. This removal is an example of what? A. Gerrymandering. B. Internal politics. C. Risk avoidance. D. Risk acceptance. Answer D. Although this is a questionable approach, removal of a risk finding in a report is, implicitly, risk acceptance. It could, however, be even worse than that, and in some industries, this could be considered negligent and a failure of due care. A risk manager should normally object to such an action and may consider documenting the matter or even filing a formal protest. Question 40. Which of the following is not a risk management methodology? A. FRAP. B. ISO IEC 27005. C. NIST Special Publication 800-39. D. FAIR. Answer D. FAIR, Factor Analysis of Information Risk, is not a risk management framework but a risk assessment methodology. Though closely related, a risk management framework is concerned with the outcomes of risk assessments, but not the performance of the risk assessments themselves. Question 41. 
What is the primary objective of the factor analysis of information risk, FAIR, methodology? A. Determine the probability of a threat event. B. Determine the impact of a threat event. C. Determine the cost of a threat event. D. Determine the type of a threat event. Answer A. The primary objective of FAIR is to determine the probability of an event using what-if analysis, which cannot be easily done using maturity models or checklists. Question 42. Why might the first control objective of CIS be inventory of authorized and unauthorized devices? A. Most organizations are required to have effective asset inventory processes. B. The CIS controls framework is hardware asset-centric. C. Several IT and security processes depend upon an effective hardware inventory. D. The CIS controls framework is an antiquated controls framework. Answer C. It is postulated that CIS places hardware asset inventory as its first control because hardware inventory is central to critical processes such as vulnerability management, security event monitoring, and malware prevention and response. Question 41. What is the primary objective of the factor analysis of information risk, FAIR, methodology? A. Determine the probability of a threat event. B. Determine the impact of a threat event. C. Determine the cost of a threat event. D. Determine the type of a threat event. C. Vulnerability scans need to cover all hardware assets so that all assets are scanned. D. Penetration tests need to cover all hardware assets so that all assets are scanned. Answer D. Vulnerability management, event visibility, and malware control are among the most critical security operations processes. When these processes are effective, the chances of a successful attack diminish significantly. When asset inventory processes are ineffective, it is possible that there will be assets that are not scanned for vulnerabilities, monitored for events, or protected by anti-malware. Intruders are able to identify these assets, which makes asset inventory a critically important activity in information security. Question 44. What are the most important security-related criteria for system classification? A. Data sensitivity. B. Data sensitivity and operational criticality. C. Operational criticality. D. Location. Answer B. Generally, the operational criticality of a system and the sensitivity of information stored in or processed by the system are the two most important criteria that determine a system's classification. Question 45. A new CISO in a financial service organization is working to get asset inventory processes under control. The organization uses on-premises and IaaS-based virtualization services. What approach will most effectively identify all assets in use? A. Perform discovery scans on all networks. B. Obtain a list of all assets from the patch. C. Obtain a list of all assets from the Security Event and Information Management SIEM, system. D. Count all of the servers in each data center. Answer A. Although none of these approaches is ideal, Performing discovery scans on all networks is the best first step. Even so, it will be necessary to consult with network engineers to ensure that discovery scans will scan all known networks in on-premises and IaaS environments. Other helpful steps include interviewing system engineers to understand virtual machine management systems and obtain inventory information from them. Question 46. Which of the following security-based metrics is most likely to provide value when reported to management? A. Number of firewall packets dropped per server per day. B. Number of persons who have completed security awareness training. C. Number of phishing messages blocked per month. D. Percent of production servers that have been patched within SLA. Answer D. Of the choices listed, this metric will provide the most value and meaning to management, because this helps to reveal the security posture of production servers that support the business. Question 47. Revila, a CISO reports security-related metrics to executive management. The trend for the past several months for the metric percent of patches applied within SLA for server supporting manufacturing is 100%, 99.5%, 100%, 100%, 99.2%, and 74.5%. What action should Revila take with regards to these metrics? A. Explain that risk levels have dropped correspondingly. B. No action is required because this is normal for patch management processes. C. Investigate the cause of the reduction in patching and report to management. D. Wait until the next month to see if the metric returns to normal. Answer C. As patching is an important activity, and because the servers support critical business operations, this sudden drop in patch coverage needs to be investigated immediately and corrected as quickly as possible. Question 48. 
Duncan is the CISO in a large electric utility. Duncan received an advisory that describes a serious flaw in Intel CPUs that permits an attacker to take control of an affected system. Knowing that much of the utility's industrial control system, ICS, is Intel-based, what should Duncan do next? A. Report the situation to executive management. B. Create a new entry in the risk register. C. Analyze the situation to understand business impact. D. Declare a security incident. Answer C. Though it's tempting to notify executive management immediately, without first understanding any potential business impact, there's little to tell. For this reason, the best first step is to analyze the matter so that any business impact can be determined. Question 49. Duncan is the CISO in a large electric utility. Duncan received an advisory that describes a serious flaw in Intel CPUs that permits an attacker to take control of an affected system. After analyzing the advisory, Duncan realizes that many of the ICS devices in the environment are vulnerable. Knowing that much of the utility's industrial control system, ICS, is Intel-based, what should Duncan do next? A. Create a new entry in the risk register. B. Report the situation to executive management. C. Create a new entry in the vulnerability register. D. Declare a security incident. Answer B. Because the CISO has analyzed the advisory, the impact to the organization can be known. This matter should be reported to executive management, along with an explanation of business impact and a remediation plan. Question 50. An internal audit examination of the employee termination process determined that in 20% of employee terminations, one or more terminated employee user accounts were not locked or removed. The internal audit department also found that routine monthly user access reviews identified 100% of missed account closures, resulting in those user accounts being closed no more than 60 days after users were terminated. What corrective actions, if any, are warranted? A. Increase user access review process frequency to twice per week. B. Increase user access review process frequency to weekly. C. No action is necessary since monthly user access review process is effective. D. Improve the user termination process to reduce the number of missed account closures. Answer D. The rate that user terminations are not performed properly is too high. Increasing the frequency of user access reviews will likely take too much time. The best remedy is to find ways of improving the user termination process. Since the miss rate is 20%, it is assumed that all processes are manual.